The children yearn for a Steam Deck too, but they also yearn for a home Steam Deck console, a Steam machine if you will. Valve infamously failed to break into the hardware market about 10 years ago. This was known as the Steam Machine Initiative. Valve had a very different plan for Linux gaming than they did now. And of course, most infamously, Valve never actually made any Steam machines. Companies like Alienware and Zotac were the ones that made the Steam machines. And of course, Valve's entire approach to the Steam Machine ecosystem was, simply put, not the best. But times have changed. 10 years later, Valve proved that a Steam machine could work. The Steam Deck is essentially a portable Steam machine. It's a Steam machine manufactured and designed by Valve. It's relatively inexpensive and it plays like 90% of your Windows titles. All of the strengths of the Steam Deck are diametrically opposed to all of the weaknesses of the Steam machines. So now the big question is, could the modern day Steam machine survive? How did the original Steam machines fail? What went wrong? Well first, let's talk about Proton, or rather the lack thereof. Valve had very different grand plans for getting games to work on Linux. Proton wasn't established until 2018 long after the Steam machines had died out. Before Proton, Valve's main plans were to court developers into developing native Linux versions of games. Games like The Witcher 3 and Street Fighter V had SteamOS ports announced, essentially meaning the developers were making a Linux-compatible version of both titles. These plans unfortunately never really came to fruition. And of course, back then, a majority of your Steam library would have been unplayable on your Steam machine. And while Proton back then didn't exist, Wine did. But running Steam games through Wine involved installing the Windows version of Steam through Wine and running it that way, which was a huge pain in the butt. People say Mac OS had no games, but back then it was even worse for Linux. So yes, you bought a machine that could only play a fraction of your main PC titles. Thankfully we have Proton now. Valve learned from their mistake of relying on developers to make Linux versions and decided to, more or less, develop Wine into Proton and integrate Proton into Steam directly. Proton is one of the biggest reasons why the Steam Deck was such a success. There'd be no way Valve would ever try a Steam Machine 2 without Proton. Let's talk about the next shortcoming, the price. Building a PC today can be prohibitively expensive for even an entry-level PC, but back then, building PCs was really cheap. Okay, maybe not really cheap, but fairly cheap. The Steam Machines were essentially pre-built PCs. They used quite a few off-the-shelf PC components, but they were extremely marked up. Obviously, it would have been cheaper to build your own PC with the same specs, but even buying a pre-built Windows PC with the same specs would have been cheaper than buying a Steam Machine. Steam Machines didn't operate as a loss leader like, say, any normal console. They were straight up a ripoff. Not to mention, SteamOS was publicly available to install, so you could just install it on any old PC and have your own Steam machines, making buying the Steam machines kind of pointless. I suspect the prices were high because it wasn't Steam making them, it was Alienware, Zotac, and probably a couple of other companies making these Steam machines, and they needed to make a profit as well. I mean, they're not Valve, they're not the ones trying to run Steam, they don't get a portion from software sales. There's also the fact that there were multiple Steam machines, with multiple different specs too. Most PC gamers can read tech specs, so it's not a huge deal, but these Steam machines were marketed towards a console audience as well. A console audience that really doesn't know how to read tech specs, and yes, they were all differently priced with different specs, wildly different specs I might add. It's not very conducive to a console market. Now if we look at today's PC prices, they're insanely expensive. GPU prices have like tripled in price. But let's look at the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is absurdly cheap. $400 to start. It was essentially designed and manufactured by Valve. And yes, while we have more than one type of Steam Deck, you know, you have your Steam Deck and then your Steam Deck OLED, there aren't any major differences in performance. And the Steam Deck itself has become an iconic device. It's something that your average gamer cannot recognize. I believe those are the two biggest reasons as to why the Steam Machine failed. But now you have to gauge the audience as to whether or not they actually want a Steam Machine too, because while Valve has corrected most of these issues, the fact of the matter is it's still a matter of whether or not people 
want a Steam Machine 2. Part of the Steam Deck's novelty and what made it so special was that it was literally a portable gaming PC that was accessible to the masses, incredibly powerful for the price, and also portable as well. It's a great value proposition for a device that you can basically take wherever. And in terms of competition, the only real competition the Steam Deck has are other PC handhelds and the Nintendo Switch, yes I get it. But the Steam Machines are very different products, and if a Steam Machine 2 were to be released today, they'd have to compete with both Microsoft and Sony. And there's also the fact that yes, you could just build your own Steam Machine. You could literally build your own living room PC, and you could literally just plug it up to your TV and play games that way today. Let's also not forget the fact that the Steam Machines did in fact come with a Steam Controller. Yes, the Steam Controller was polarizing at launch, but it lets you play PC titles that you wouldn't be able to play on the couch. So if Valve were to release a Steam Machine 2, they would need to re-release the Steam Controller, or make a new Steam Controller. They could reuse the old designs, or perhaps they could just make a controller version of the Steam Deck controller? I don't know. What is important to note is that the Steam Controller itself also failed. I got my Steam Controller during college and I loved it, but whenever I brought it around to other people, everyone I knew hated it. Quite literally, no one in my friend group liked the Steam Controller, and these weren't like just dude bros playing Call of Duty all day, no, these were like legit nerds. I'm not gonna sit here and rationalize that the Steam Controller somehow contributed to the failure of the Steam Machines. But introducing a brand new controller type alongside a new device type must have been polarizing. Yes, the Steam Machines not only supported Steam controllers, but also other controllers as well. But I think the controller itself is more emblematic of the system than the actual system itself. When you think of a cohesive console experience, you typically think about the controller. So I will say this, I think if Valve does make a Steam Machine 2, they will also make a Steam Controller 2 as well. But the big question that, you know, a lot of people, especially the Steam Controller faithful have, is whether or not Valve will stick to, if they'll stick to the original Steam Controller layout or if they'll adapt the Steam Controller 2 to be more like the Steam Deck. But of course, it's difficult to know if Valve is even making a Steam Machine 2, much less a Steam Controller 2, you know? I think it's pretty obvious that I want Valve to take another crack at Steam Machines. I'd like for them to manufacture a cohesive Steam Machine experience. Steam OS is a lot better than it used to be. Gaming on Linux is also a lot better than it used to be as well. But there are also very different expectations for a Steam Machine 2 compared to say the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is a portable handheld so it can't have too much power. A Steam Machine 2 that's always plugged into power at home seems like it would be a lot more powerful, or at least there wouldn't be as many issues with power consumption. And it would presumably be plugged into a TV at all times, most likely a 4K TV. I know that's what I would do. There's also the matter of price. Yes, the Steam Machines were overpriced as heck, but if Valve were to make it and Valve were to manufacture it, then th it wouldn't have to be. They could make it price competitive to say a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, or at the very least not that much more expensive than either of those. And Valve could sell the Steam Machine 2 as a loss leader. I mean, come on, Steam is literally an infinite money machine. They can afford to take a loss or two sometimes. Anyways, I've rambled long enough about the Steam Machine 2, and I don't even know if it exists or not. Let's just hope it exists and that I can get my hands on one if it does exist. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.